Welcome back to Empowered. I'm Elizabeth Namofsky. Today's episode, we're discussing to separate or not. That is the question. So Samantha, before we went to break, we were talking about separating. What is the significance of the date of separation? So the date of separation is significant in terms of the financial division of assets following a separation. It is the date that we crystallize the value of assets that are owned solely by one of the parties. So what are some of the issues then that are needed to, that we need to be aware of when, when we're considering a separation? In relation to the division of assets. So um, we were talking a little bit about this before, you know, when pre-planning for separation or what are some of the things that you need to keep in mind? So because the date of separation is the date that we crystallize the value of assets, um, if you know, for example, of some significant event that's on the horizon that may impact your family's finances in some way, you may choose to be strategic in p- terms of picking the date of separation. You may choose to pick a date of separation that's sooner or later. Um, and um, But this, again, this would only apply to people who are married and not to co- common law spouses, which is a significant difference. Oh, interesting, because my next question was going to be, are the issues any different for someone who's married or or, or living in common law? So what should somebody who is living in common law look out for? Well, it's a little bit different when you're common law, because when you're not married, you don't have an automatic entitlement to share in the value of assets that were acquired during the marriage or owned by either party or during the relationship that were acquired by either party. It's only persons who are married whether they are um, heterosexual or same sex, as if it's the it's the act of getting married that makes the difference. Okay, so that's interesting. It's the act of getting married that makes the difference, and it doesn't matter whether you're hetero, same sex. It, there, there's no difference there. Um, no. So many couples put family assets in their spouse's name. You know, they get married. They like to commingle things. What happens if none of the assets? are in your name and all the assets are in your spouse's name? Well, again, this is a big difference whether you're married or common law. So uh, if you're married, it doesn't matter typically whose name the assets are in because it's the value of all assets that are owned on the date of separation that are equalized or the values shared. it, when you're common law, again, there's no automatic entitlement to share in assets. And so it's a problem it, when you're common law, if you've put all your assets into your spouse's name. Yeah, It's not so, necessarily the end of the story, but right. it becomes more difficult. But this is good because these are questions that a lot of people need answered, but don't know to ask. I just want to go back to children. When it comes to children, um, you know, you, you hear so many stories of people saying, you know, I want the children to live with me or one week on, one week off. How do you decide where the children will live? Well, the overriding factor in any decision relating to the children is what's in their best interest. And there is a number of factors that a court or parents or anybody should be looking at to determine where the children will live. Um, m- many parents are surprised to hear Many mothers are surprised to hear that it's what was happening before the separation is not necessarily determinative of what's going to happen after the separation. And so when we're thinking about separating, one comment you often hear is, if I only knew that my children would end up spending so much time with the other parent, I may have decided not to separate. You know, and and that's really interesting because a lot of people tend not to separate because they don't want their lifestyle to be changed. And I'm going to ask you about that later on, but I want to still keep with the children right now. Um, who makes a decision about the children? Like who, who ultimately makes those decisions? Well, in a perfect world, the parents themselves will make those decisions because they are the people that know their children best. But if the parents cannot agree, then a third party is going to make a decision based on the evidence that is before them, whether it's a judge, a mediator, an arbitrator, um, somebody else is going to have to make that decision as to where the children are going to live and who is going to be making the decisions, the legal decisions regarding the children. 
Okay, so we're going to go to a, a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to discuss what age do children get to decide where they live. And then I want to delve a little bit more into, you know, divorce and why people or why people do and why people don't. So please don't go away. We'll be right back. 